welcome to Pilgrim Church Worship. Today our lay leader is Bob Beckwith, and our service is recorded so others can tune in later. We'll begin now with a piano prelude, but before I play Clementi's Sonatina in G, I remind you that if there are prayer concerns, feel free to enter them into the chat box at any point so that I, re I remember to actually look at them and include them. Bob is still muted. Bob, can you start over? Can you hear me now? Yes. Good morning. It's great to have you all with us this morning. No matter where you are in life's journey, you're certainly welcome at Pilgrim Church. After getting dressed this morning, I took a look in the mirror and chuckled. I thought, my golly, I look like Dave McClave in his famous bowling shirt. I have a cup, just a couple of announcements. Uh, first um, is next Sunday, August 2nd, will be a communion Sunday. And Bible study resumes on Tuesday, uh, August 4th. 
Will you please join me in a call to worship? The world belongs to God, the earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful to live together in unity. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. Open our lips, O God, and our mouths shall declare your praise. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. O oh God, you have set before us a great hope that your realm will come on earth and have taught us to pray for its coming. Make us ready to thank you for the signs of its dawning and to work for the perfect day when your will shall be done, in the name of Jesus, we ask for your blessings, just as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the night is and the power of the glory forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 341 in the Pilgrim Hymn of Will, Dear Lord and Father, and I will pull it up right now. Dear Lord and Father, open 
When reading scripture from both the Old and New Testament, it's customary to begin with the Old Testament. However, I'm going to reverse the order this morning since it lines up with my story better. The first reading is from Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. And from Psalm 46, <clears throat> the first part of verse 10, be still and know that I am God. The word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. I enjoy hearing church friends speak at our summer services because it allows me the opportunity to see how their faith shapes and guides their lives. This morning, I would like to share some of my faith thoughts. Back in May, I heard on the news that there was a shortage of bird seed. I chuckled thinking I could understand a shortage of hand sanitizers and wipes but why birdseed? I mean, that the people were asked to stay, since the people were asked to stay home, they had suddenly discovered all the beautiful birds in their yards. And now they were buying bird feeders and birdseed. My first thought was, how sad. It took a pandemic for people to stop long enough and take in all the birds that had been there all along. But then I realized I was one of these people many years ago, always in a rush, never taking time to just be. Fortunately, things changed for me. However, it took time. Let me explain. Years ago, my wife Carolyn would often say, don't tell Bob he can't do or have something because if he truly wants it, <clears throat> he'll find a way to obtain it. I took that as a compliment. However, a couple of years later, she said, you know, I admire how you go after things, but I also feel sorry for you in a way, to which I gave my standard reply, what did I do now? She said, you're always so busy planning and thinking about what's next. You never take time to enjoy the moment. You're just so anxious. I watch you in church and know that your mind is somewhere else. Slow down, Bob. Yes, set goals, but enjoy the journey. Be grateful for all the stages of your life. I took this all in and asked, how do I do it? To which she replied with a slight smile, if you really want it, you'll find a way. Ouch. I thought a lot about her observations and found them to be pretty sound. But how was I going to change? I was stumped, but the first thing I decided to stop was my daydreaming in church. Perhaps I might hear some answers to my situation. And besides, Carolyn had a good seat to view my behavior since she was perched in the choir loft every Sunday. And wouldn't you know, a few Sundays later, our minister preached a sermon based on Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious 
which really hit home to me. After that, church started becoming my mental slowdown time, an opportunity to be grateful for all I had been given. But my story doesn't end there. A while later, I decided to solve my weight problem, something that had plagued me my entire life. I always ate fairly healthy and well-balanced meals, but I ate as if the food supply was going to end that day. Diets, the type consisting of giving up certain foods until the goal is reached, never seemed to work for me. I could have qualified for the poster boy for yo-yo dieting, lose 10 pounds, gain 12, lose 10 pounds again, and gain 14. But the thought of not being overweight wouldn't go away. So I made a decision that I was going to get down to my body mass index or BMI weight. Super decision, just one minor problem. I never bothered to learn what the BMI weight for my height should be. So I looked it up and discovered it was just five pounds over my birth weight. Still in total shock, I decided to ditch this whole idea, grab a big dish of ice cream and figure out my next project. But before I could move, those four words from Philippians entered my head, do not be anxious. And the next thought that flashed into my mind was, Bob, find a total lifestyle program, not a short-term diet plan. Now I was really confused. However, I could not get it out of my head that I wanted to get my weight within my BMI, BMI bracket and keep it there forever. Rather than keep fighting myself, I decided to go for it, starting with my four cherished words and the idea to find a program that I could comfortably use for the rest of my life. After much research, I latched on to the portion control system, which very slow, which whereby you very slowly cut down on your food intake, but you do not deny yourself any foods. The write-up stated that the major drawback to this plan was that one will not see a large weight loss in a short period of time. Fine with me, since this was going to be my forever program. I also decided to do something that is considered a no-no in all diet programs. I would weigh myself every day and keep a record of it, something I continue doing to this day. And the last piece to my new lifestyle plan would be a one mile walk twice a week. All seemed to be going well, with the exception of the walking. Oh, I was taking them. However, they were turning into far more than just exercise. Walking was becoming my quiet time, my centering time, a time to be with God. Two walks soon became and still are five or six per week, logging in 12 to 16 miles. In 2018, I discovered a short writing in the New York bestseller, This I Believe which absolutely speaks to me. The author is Susan Cassio, a hospital chaplain who was married and the mother of three. Here's the last paragraph from her piece entitled, A Daily Walk, Just to Listen. I believe in a daily walk to listen because that is when I am close to God. That is when I find my way. 
and I am at peace when I tune out the voices of the world long enough to hear the still small voice of God directing me. Be still, Psalm 46 reminds me, and know that I am God. And yes, after several years, I have lost over 50 pounds, which puts me well within my BMI bracket. And better still, I have no problem keeping the weight off. Just as an aside, I'm so glad I didn't, I passed on the birdseed diet. A constructive observation from my wife, a teaching moment from Jesus, and an exercise plan that has brought me ever closer to God. For all these I say, Amen. Our next hymn is Peace I Leave With You, My Friends. You're muted, Dot. Have a funky mouse. Thank you. 
God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Today we do not have any prayer requests, so I'm just going to ask everyone to take a moment and think of one person or joy or concern that you would like to pray for in this moment and just have them in your thoughts. Gentle God, some of us gather in this prayer from grieving moods or hurting bodies, from fear or loss or pain. Grant your comfort and courage to all who need it. Others of us gather in this prayer from joy, excitement, and hope. Receive our thanksgivings for all the blessings of our lives. We bring to you this day a harmony of lives, a rainbow of feelings. Bless us all, O oh God. Hear our prayers and be present to us today and always. We pray in the name of Jesus, our teacher and friend. Amen. It is now time for our offering. If you would like to support Pilgrim Church, you may mail in a check or arrange electronic giving by contacting Dave McClave. Additionally, we now accept donations using a credit card or PayPal on our website under the sub, uh, under the tab learning, growing and caring and select giving. And we thank you very much for your support. The offertory this morning is a setting of Psalm 23 by Richard Bruckworth Colligan, All of My Days.
Please join me in the benediction. Go forth, for the love of God is ours to share. The peace of Christ is ours to extend. And the power of the Holy Spirit is ours to offer. Amen. Stop recording.